a little nighttime action with a sweep generator. I've got the sweep generator all hooked up, 20 megahertz, got marker turned on. This is basically what the uh, what the um, bandpass looks like. Which isn't too bad. I mean, I didn't do anything but just set the peaks, set the traps. There was no tweaking to get anything going on. Uh, the marker seems to be in the right place, although I'm not 100% sure about that because I'm not 100% sure about the accuracy of the built-in marker here. I hope to get the crystal that will work. The light, sorry about moving this in the dark. Hopefully I'll be able to get a crystal that will fit there. We're going to play around with that a little bit. But basically, there's the marker, and I can kind of move it around into the uh, traps. There's that down to 27 megahertz. We turn it up a little bit. You can see it moving down right there. Turn it up. There you go. That's where it's supposed to be, according to things like 25.75, and that's much what this thing says 25.75 and I'm, I think that one's accurate. You see there's a little bit of a bump down here at the bottom. I'm not too worried about that. And the traps are set properly. When I try to put the marker it disappears when it goes into the trap. Let me turn it way up. Where are you? Marker. There you are. And when I get right down into the trap that's a 21.25 trap. And set at 20. Well, actually, that's 21.25 is right there, according to my thing. 21.25 in the bottom of the trap, and then it's it comes back up there again. That's a sound hump. That's good. It's got a nice sound hump. Should have decent sound. And it goes back down to the 19. I think it's a 19.75 trap. Oh, uh, you can see. Everything looks pretty good. The setup is using the same uh, pad I had before when I was using the uh, signal generator, the fixed signal generator. This is a uh, Dynascan TP41. I have a schematic online what that is. It's just a 75 ohm matching pad. Switch to the 75 ohm position going through a ungrounded tube shield. No frequency counter attached this time because, frankly, it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't, I don't need it. It gets all crazy from the uh, sweep generator. I've got that that lead there. Goes to my 3-volt bias check. The bias on this thing is just set by the contrast pot acting as a voltage divider. You just adjust the contrast so you get 3 volts there. The connection for the, for the uh, scope is the same as with the VTVM. You've got a clip lead going to the output from the video detector. 10k resistor, uh, that little shiny bumble, that shiny cap right there behind that big orange drop completes the uh, RC filter. Uh, I'm using a probe. I think I got it set to 1x. My peak to peak is about 5 volts, I think, right here. If I'm reading this right, I can't be sure. I haven't messed around with that calibration or not, though. Uh, and that's that. Oh, and the. Uh, I'm using the external trigger hooked up to this, and what that allows me to do is, yes, you know, I can use the um, the phasing. Here, I, here I am adjusting the phasing using this phase pot right here. Uh, you have to play around with the settings here. I had a minus dB, uh, minus 20 dB at about 30% output on the fine. I have about 75% sweep. Um, the marker range, well, there's a, there's three ranges. One of them doubles up. I guess there's harmonics involved between the 20 and the 75 and the 60 and the 225 for the harmonics. Marker size is adjustable. Uh, and that's about it. Anyway, the, the game plan now, uh, oh, for, for the sake of science, um, weighs the same as a duck. Just kidding. Uh, for the sake of science, I did some tube rolling. I had these tubes here, and I swapped around some of these 6AG5s, and I put a different 6AU6, wondering if there could have been any variation in this weight, in this uh, graph, by using different tubes. And there, essentially, there wasn't. So 
maybe, and I think that's because I think I had already replaced the tubes a while ago with some new tubes, so I guess they're sure pretty much all the same. I was curious to know how much of an effect that would have. I've heard that changing tubes in the IF strip can, can foul up the, um, the alignment. I didn't really notice any differences. I assume it's got something to do with the uh, capacitance, the internal capacitance of the tube affecting the tuned circuit. Eh, I, I just, it's not, I didn't notice it. Anyway, that's it. So, more to come. What we're going to be doing ne next is I'm going to be uh, double checking this calibration, seeing if I can get the crystal that would be the right frequencies there. I need to find something that gives me more than just one frequency marker. That's the 25.75 course the traps are what the traps are, but it'd be nice if they would have given me markers for the top of those, uh, for the peak of that band pass. I'm going to look at some other uh, literature. I'm pretty sure my RCA, um, for my 8T241, has uh, quite a few more markers. I assume they're all about the same. So, I'll take a look at that and see. I guess I could kind of guesstimate what those frequencies are by just assuming the traps and just kind of make it a, an approximate scale. But, you know, if I can find something to write, I'd rather do that. Anyway, uh, that's that reversed. For some reason it's always backwards on here. They always have the uh, high frequencies on the left side and on mine the high frequency is on the right side. And I can't reverse the uh, horizontal sweep on this so it's, it is what it is. Anyway, that's that. More to come. Thanks for watching.